Hello and welcome to Mastering in Logic's Quick Tips. No nonsense quick tips that I think you might find useful. Maybe. So all this week we have a Black Friday offer running at MIL and I want to thank everybody that has taken advantage and signed up. I've been overwhelmed by the number of people that have signed up and are now training with me learning all about the mastering process. But as a composer, I use lots and lots of different plugins, third-party plugins, all of the time. And there's a whole bundle of Logic plugins, of course, that are exceptionally good, but often overlooked. And the ESP is one such plugin that has some very powerful features, but is extremely simple to use, but at the same time, hardly ever used, or certainly in my case, the only reason why I use it usually is to create white noise sweeps and things like that if I want to create a very, very quick transition. But I started to look at the plugin and decided that I would do some tutorials to help you maybe think about this plugin in different ways. So what we're going to do is check out this quick track that I've put together. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it does demonstrate how versatile this plugin is. As you can see on the screen, every single track is an ESP uh, track. So there's drums and bass and keys and leads and a very subtle effect in there as well. So let's have a quick listen and then I'm going to talk through how I created some of the sounds. <laughs> Okay, so I thought in this tutorial what I'd look at is the drum parts. If I go through everything, it may take a considerable length of time. So if I just start with the drums and then we can then maybe move on from there. So let's take a look at just the drum parts. And remember, this is all created in the ESP. So here I've got three instances of the ESP. There's a kick drum, a snare that I've created and a hi-hat. And then over this side, I've set up a demo track so I can actually show you how I go about creating the different percussive sounds on the ESP. So here's the drums. Okay, so you can hear there is an extra sound in there which is this sweep effects here, but I'll talk about that a little later. So let's start, start off by looking at the kick drum, how we create the kick drum. So I think the first thing to notice is that everything is set with just the noise. So if I bring my demo track up over here, the other oscillators, the triangle, sawtooth, square, 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 they're all set to their minimum. So as I now, let me just bring the solo up on the demo track. So you can see as I hit the key, we just get white noise. So how do we go about turning this into a kick drum? Well, we have to take advantage of the frequency and resonance. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is just set this back to zero. We don't want to use vibrato or wah at all. Obviously, you can do. You can get as creative as you want. I just want to create a straight kick drum sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the resonance all the way up. So as I now bring the kick drum down, or sorry, the white noise down, you'll hear that the frequency, as I pass through the various frequencies going from, I think this is probably around 20 kilohertz all the way down to 20, you'll be able to hear the resonant creating a bump. And it's that bump that will create our kick drum and also our snare and our hi-hat. So here we go. So you can see, as I get to the lower part of the frequency, obviously, we create some sort of kick type sound. And then the next thing I'm going to do, if you notice on this one, I've set the velocity volume to zero. This means that every time I hit the key, it will play at the same velocity, no matter what I do in terms of how much um, uh, velocity values I 
create when I hit the key. Okay, now you can hear that the filter is still being activated and that's because of this, the ADSR. Uh, and I'm going to set this to zero. Now if I hit the key again, you can see that it's activating in a different way and that's because this is no longer responding to the ADSR values here. So I'm going to bring this back down. I want a tiny bit of movement from my kick drum. So I'm going to set this to there and you can hear now we've got somewhere close to a kick drum sound. So what I'm going to do next is just simply play around with the attack, decay, sustain and release. A great thing to do to give your kicks a nice sort of kick sound is to bring the sustain down. So as soon as I do that you can hear straight away it sounds more like a kick. I can adjust the decay and as I change this, you can see we can create almost somewhere close to 808 kicks and 909 kicks. Now if you want a click in your kick drum sound, you can bring the attack and release right down. That can be quite useful sometimes if you have uh, a mix with a strong bass drum sound and you want your kick to click through. Even if you have another kick drum running you can set the ESP up to give you a nice click. If you don't like the click you can hit Alt and A on the attack and Alt and R for the release and that will just about take the kick uh, click sound away. So there you go that's how you create a kick drum sound with the ESP. Let's now go on to the snare and look at the snare. With the snare you're going to essentially do the same thing. If we look at this you can see that the settings are roughly the same. Whoops, uh, about there. Uh, the attack, decay, sustain and release is very similar but of course the main difference is the frequency is increased. So we're getting a higher part of noise within the frequency spectrum. If you notice also the resonance has been brought down. This is so you don't get a very high pitched ring. So let's try and create a snare sound. I'm going to bring the resonance down and the frequency up. And then I'm going to play around with the attack and release again. So you see you can create different types of effects. Oh, there's one thing that I missed, uh, which we talk about actually here with the snare, but it applies the same for the kick drum, um, is adding some overdrive. And of course overdrive is just going to give you more harmonics, upper frequency harmonics and more bite to the sound. So let's uh, have a play around with that. So you can see I would say it's kind of a cross between, somewhere between a clap and a snare and you can create some really quite nice sounds. If we set the Velo filter and the ADSR you can create some really quite interesting sounds. And of course if you want your snare to have different velocity values, you can set the velo volume here, like that. Alright then finally let's take a quick look at the hi-hat. Now of course with the hi-hat we're going to do a similar thing, we're going to have the same frequency range to the snare. Higher you go with the frequency range the higher the hi-hat sound will be, the, the brighter it will be, uh, but you want to dial in a small amount of resonance as well and this will give you a much greater degree of sort of a ticking hi-hat sound. So there you go, you can see straight away, I've not really moved the frequency all that much but I've changed the resonance 
and I've got that sound. And again, all I need to do is play around with the overdrive, play around with the ADSR values, and I can fine tune my hi-hat sound. And again, with the velocity filter, I can change the way the hi-hat would behave. And that's really all there is to it, to creating kick drums, snares, and hi-hats with the ESP. Let's listen to my final sounds one more time. Now, of course, there is some extra processing going on. Let me just bring these down. There is some extra processing going on here. I've added some cr compression and EQ. One of my favorite Logic plugins is the Bit Crusher, and you can see that I've driven it really hard. I've used some downsampling, and I've mixed it in only 3.2%, so it's enough to change the sound, but I give it a bit more character. Okay, so that's what I've gone for, but you can also try out a, a whole multitude of different things. So let's now take a look at this one. Some EQ, just you can see here, I'm just rolling off the bottom, rolling off the bottom, and even on the kick drum, I'm rolling off the bottom to get it to work with the bass drum sound. And the only other thing I did was add a tiny bit of distortion, and I used the tone all the way around to the right just to add a bit more brightness and one of my other favorite plugins especially for creating nice transients and not like the ESP this is often overlooked but the enveloper is absolutely brilliant at really bringing out transients so let's just play the hi-hat on its own you hear there's much more knock there in the sound that initial transient And it can really help to bring out uh, the transients of snares, kick drums, basses. Um, there's one thing I want to show you with the bass, actually, with the enveloper while we're here. If you look at the enveloper for the bass, you can see that I'm using negative values. So I'm not actually bringing out the transient of the bass. And the reason why I did that was because I wanted it to sit away from the transient of the kick drum so the two work really nicely together so there you go that's looking at the percussive parts hopefully i'll have time this week to do the other elements if you're interested in learning about how i created the keys and lead sounds using the ESP. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting Mastering in Logic. If you do want to check out our MIL Black Friday deal for $10, all six hours mastering and uh, you get access to me as well, you can email me anytime and I'll take you through any questions that you have related to mastering and indeed logic as well. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.